Dr. Alex Korb. He's a neuroscientist and the author of The Upward Spiral, Using Neuroscience to Reverse the Course of Depression, One Small Change at a Time. And I wonder if you could speak to us about brain circuitry and three ways to help calm down intense emotions and negative stressful responses. The, uh, the circuitry in the brain that's most closely related to our emotions is, is called the limbic system. Uh, and uh, it's very closely connected to the stress response throughout the body that releases adrenaline and cortisol. Uh, and uh, interestingly, it's also affected by what you focus on mm. because um, your higher order brain regions like the prefrontal cortex that help um, motivate you towards long-term goals or help you think critically about things, it has the capacity to regulate or modulate your emotions somewhat. Uh, and so the more that things essentially are out of your control uh, or the more uncertainty there is that amps up the limbic system to get you all stressed out and get your emotions uh, really jacked up right. um, and that can lead to a lot of anxiety it can also lead to a lot of excitement uh, like the intensity of emotions uh, are about sort of uncertainty and uncontrollability that they may that may be a positive thing that may be a negative thing um, but these higher order brain regions like the prefrontal cortex can help regulate and calm down that emotional intensity. And so what happens is oftentimes when there's a, something that's uncertain or that's out of your control or that has potentially big consequences, I call those the three C's, the control, certainty, and consequences. Those are the things that really amplify the reactivity of your emotional circuitry. And often when it starts to get amplified, then you start to pay attention more to those things that are out of control or uncertain, which, you know, sort of feeds that loop. Uh, what you can do is sort of intentionally try to redirect your attention to the things in your life uh, that you have control over or that you know are certain. They're not going to change. Or you can try to uh, reframe some of your automatic thoughts that, you know, they're telling you, uh, um, oh, my God, uh, my life is completely over. I'm going to be miserable if I can't hang out with my friends. And while that feels that way sometimes, rationally you could, you know, intervene and be like, yeah, I, I know it feels like my life is over and terrible, but like if, if it's just one more day, you know, I could last one more day. Uh, my life isn't over now. So like, yeah, if this went on for another year or two, maybe I couldn't uh, withstand that, but like I can survive today. Right. Uh, so, or like, you know, the consequences of me not being able to hang out with my friend today or not being able to hang out with my friend this week, it's very small. There were probably many weeks in your life where you didn't get to hang out with your friend and you were totally fine. Uh, but if you're, because you're, you know, focused on the uncontrollability of it, and your stress response is already amplified, you're probably thinking of it in this amplified way of like, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to hang out with my friends ever again in my life. It's going to be totally ruined. And your higher order um, brain regions can sort of think a little critically about that and be like, mm, well, it would be unfortunate if I couldn't hang out with my friends this week, but it wouldn't actually make that much of a difference right. in my life. Gotcha. And that sort of, reframe the consequences to make it smaller and helps calm down the limbic system. Right. So what can mm -hmm. be done to strengthen that, the, the PFC, so that, you know, you have more of a chance? Like, I know sometimes myself, I'm like, oh, well, I'll just try to reframe it. 
It's like, yeah, get out of right. here. I got, you know, I got problems, you know. Yeah. Right. And so that's one of those things where, like, uh, there's not one solution mm, right. to it. Like, if I, you know, just did research uh, about cognitive reappraisal yeah. uh, or, you know, reframing things, I'm like, okay, hey, everybody, pay attention. This is the answer for everything. You just need to reframe <laughs> your problems. And, you know, like, you know, Tony Robbins, I feel like, is maybe a good example of this. No, you're just thinking about it wrong. Or, like, there are a lot of people um, – you know, like that, who are like, oh, it's just all in your head. You just need, you're thinking about it wrong. And like, it's sort of true. And like, that's a very powerful tool. But I think it's a bit simplistic because like, no, it's, you can't just always think your way out of every problem. Uh, so it's an important tool, but it's not going to fix everything. Uh, so you just mentioned uh, a few other things that are actually pretty easy to solve. Um, you're saying, oh, sometimes you're tired, you're hungry, and, you know, I can't reframe my thoughts and it makes it difficult. Okay, well, because the simplest solution is not to try and reframe your thoughts. It's to, like, eat something mm-hmm. and to sleep better. Uh, and, the like, the problem is, like, if you're hungry and you need to eat, that's what you should do. Uh, you know, you're... you're your uh, your limbic system, the, the emotional circuitry in the brain, is very closely connected to the survival mechanisms in the body, uh, and, and that's what it evolved for. You know, you started to, you know, uh, your blood sugar dropped, and that needed to motivate your emotions to be like, I need to go eat something. Uh, it's just that our emotions are now much more complex mm-hmm. than that. We have much more complex drives and needs, but there are also sort of still basic needs that, yep, you need to eat food, you need to drink water, you need to sleep. And uh, those are sort of the, some of the best places to start with because when your emotions are running out of control and it feels like everything in your life is falling apart, you can acknowledge, yes, it does feel that way. Uh, But if I at least, take control over these like little things like eating something and changing my sleep. Well, then the problem might not seem so bad. Uh, so I think, um, you know, uh, eating properly, uh, getting enough sleep, getting enough physical activity. Uh, these are things that, um, really help balance the uh, limbic system. And so if you've, um, like, if you're really stressed and, and anxious or, you know, if your limbic system is really activated and you can say, ah, well, I don't know, is it because I'm worried about my job or I'm worried about my relationship or I just didn't have anything to eat? Well, if you can cross that, like, okay, well, I know it, I'm eating well. Uh, I know I'm sleeping well. I know I'm getting enough exercise. Okay, then it's not those things. Mm. Great. Now I know, okay, well, then I probably need to uh, deal with my relationship. I probably need to focus on my job. But, like, because we, you can't always know the source of your stress, sometimes people are like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's this or this, this, or we, like, over-focus on, you know, some aspect of, of the stress that we can't control. Uh and you sort of need to realize that, well, there's a lot of sources of stress that you can control. So you may as well uh, start taking control of those. Gotcha. So if a person has better sleep hygiene and they're eating properly, then those would be some of those little things that would help to, yeah. Yeah. So you, re- you mentioned the word sleep hygiene. Um, sleep hygiene is the, like the habits and practices, little things you can do to improve the quality of your sleep. Uh, and sleep is one of those really big ways to influence your, uh, emotions and perceptions. Uh, because, you know, when you get enough quality sleep, your, your brain doesn't have quite as much emotional reactivity and it's easier to overcome bad habits. So if you're, you know, you're feeling really stressed and you're really getting stuck in this pattern of bad habits, that's oftentimes where people focus on. They're like, oh, but I need to fix this emotion or I need to fix this bad habit. 
And I'm like, okay, well, just take a step back. Like, if you just stop focusing on so much on those things, like, oh, I want to change how I'm eating or whatever. And you're just like, okay, well, let me just go to bed at the same time every night. Or let me just make sure I get enough sunlight during the day or turn off uh, bright lights at night. Nothing directly related to your problem at hand, but things that will help improve your quality of sleep. And if you improve your quality of sleep, then you'll find it easier to overcome the pull of bad habits or the, when something goes wrong in your life, your emotional circuitry won't be quite on such a, you know, a, uh, a fine, a tight, uh, uh, you know, tightly wound so that, yeah, something goes wrong. You know, if someone criticizes you or whatever, like you're going to react, but the degree of that emotional reactivity is going to be changed by, um, how, you know, how good the quality of your sleep is. Similarly with physical activity, also known as exercise. Um, if you get enough physical activity, that helps modulate the stress response. It helps modulate the reactivity of these emotional regions. It makes it easier for uh, the prefrontal cortex to help exert control and um, override sort of your your emotional state or your, uh, you know, bad habits. And so uh, instead of just focusing on the specific problem at hand, like just first make sure, okay, am I getting enough exercise? Am I getting some sunlight? Am I um, uh, doing all these little sleep hygiene tips? And that can have a world of difference. Excellent. Okay, great. And here's a quote from your book that I think is a great tip for being able to get better sleep. Here on page 17, Dr. Alex Korb writes, In the Canadian study, a group of college students suffering from insomnia were to keep a daily gratitude journal for a week. And this simple intervention led to improved sleep, reduced physical problems, and less worrying. For more, check out Dr. Alex Korb's book, The Upward Spiral, Using Neuroscience to Reverse the Course of Depression, One Small Change at a Time. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.